I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied. Today we shall solve a few examples and through this exercise we shall try to illustrate the concept that we have learned from the theoretical analysis of steam turbines. So, the first problem that we will solve today is from the impulse turbine. Let me first read out the problem statement, then we shall start solving the problem following the you know theoretical understanding that we have. It is given that an impulse turbine with single row wheel has mean diameter 100 centimeter and speed of rotation 3000 rpm. The nozzle angle is 20 degree and the ratio of blade velocity to steam velocity is 0 0.44. The ratio of relative velocity of steam at the blade outlet to that at the blade inlet is 0 0.86. It is given that the blade outlet angle is 3 degree less than the inlet blade angle and the mass flow rate of steam is 10 kg per second. We need to calculate a few parameters, but first we need to draw the velocity triangles, then we need to calculate the tangential, axial and resultant thrust on the blades. Power developed by power developed by the blades and lastly the blading efficiency. So, let me tell you one thing that it is convenient or rather it would be much more convenient to solve the problem if we draw the velocity triangles properly. So, the first task should be to draw the velocity triangles and then we can calculate the parameters those are uh, asked in this problem. So, if we solve the problem as I said that first it would be essential to draw the velocity triangles. So, let us now draw the velocity triangles in fact, we have discussed this part in the context of the derivation of impulse turbine blading efficiency or diagram efficiency. So, if, if we consider this is the blade velocity u, I am writing here blade velocity u, sometimes it is also written or denoted by V v and if we complete the inlet velocity triangle first. So, that is the absolute velocity of steam coming out from the nozzle which is making an angle alpha or alpha 1 that is the nozzle angle. And since the wheel is rotating, so the velocity of steam relative to the blade velocity is the relative velocity and we can draw this. So, this is w 1. So, here c 1 is the absolute velocity at the blade inlet w 1 is the relative velocity at the inlet right. And since I have also discussed this part that blade velocity is 
calculated based on the mean diameter and if you look at the problem statement it is given that the mean diameter of the wheel is 100 centimeter. That means, we can now superpose the outlet velocity triangle on the common VB or common velocity uh, blade velocity. So, now if we draw the you know outlet velocity triangle then this is C 2 and this is W 2. So, say this is A, this is point B, this is point C and this point is D, this point. So, triangle ABC that is the velocity triangle which is at the inlet of the blade and triangle BCD that is the velocity triangle at the exit of the blade and we can see that this you know angle is beta 1 that is blade angle at the inlet. This angle is beta 2 that is blade angle at the outlet and this angle is alpha 2 right. Most importantly, the component of absolute velocity in the axial direction that is C A 1 that is the flow velocity at the inlet. Similarly, component of absolute velocity in the axial direction that is C A 2 that is the flow velocity at the outlet and we can clearly see that C A 1 is not equal to C A 2 from the velocity triangle and since there is no pressure drop of the steam when it is passing through the blades or moving blades, the relative velocity at the exit of the blade is not equal to the relative velocity at the inlet of the blade and that too we had seen that it is because of this roughness of the blade passage a blade surface there is a reduction in the relative velocity and that is why we can def we could define blade velocity coefficient k v or k. So, this is we can see that C A 1 is not equal to C A 2 and this component is delta C A. This is delta C A. This component is responsible for the axial thrust that would be produced. Similarly, if we try to draw the component so this is you know W theta 2 and this is W theta 1 or we can write this is C theta 1 and this is C theta 2. So, that is C theta 1 is basically component of absolute velocity in the tangential direction and C theta 2 is the component of absolute velocity in the tangential direction at the exit and C theta 1 is the component of tangential velocity at the inlet. So, this delta C theta 2, so delta C theta equal to C theta 1 plus C theta 2. So, this is C theta 1 plus C theta 2 and delta C A equal to C A 1 minus C A 2. So, this delta C theta is responsible for the tangential thrust and it is because of this thrust we are getting you know work output power 
and delta C A that is responsible for the axial thrust and that thrust should be consumed by the bearing. So, with this velocity triangles in fact, today we will be solving a few numerical problems we will be using the similar velocity diagram at least for the impulse turbine and two important relations that I would like to now write from the velocity triangles that we have drawn. One is if you look at that this as I said you this delta C theta and delta C A these two components are very important to calculate the tangential as well as axial thrust. So, we can see there are two ways by solving there are two ways by which we can really solve the problem. One is graphic through graphical representation that is called graphically. So, basically if we can if we, if we can calculate the mean velocity because mean velocity can be calculated because r p m is given diameter is given from there we can calculate. And if we now use a suitable scale to represent that mean velocity and knowing the you know nozzle angle we also can know what would be the absolute velocity. But today we shall try to solve the problems analytically just by using the trigonometric relations. So, what we can see? We can see that the we can now calculate that mean velocity that is very important quantity u that would be equal to pi d n by 60. So, this d is d m if n is r p m. So, we can calculate mean velocity alpha 1 if it is given then next we can calculate c 1. Now, two relations will be used today one is if we look at that what is delta c theta delta c theta is equal to w theta 1 plus w theta 2 that we can see from the geometry this is as good as c theta 1 plus c theta 2. So, in other way if we go to the next slide we can write delta c theta equal to c theta 1 plus c theta 2 right is equal to w theta 1 plus w theta 2 as well right that we will be using because essentially you have to calculate delta c theta for the x tangential thrust. Another thing if we now look at the inlet velocity triangle a b c we can now see that c a 1 is equal to c 1 sin alpha 1. So, we can write c a 1 that is flow velocity at the inlet that is the component of absolute velocity in the axial direction at the inlet equal to c 1 sin alpha 1. Again c a 1 equal to if we look at the velocity triangle if we give name this is a e. So, from triangle a e c we could write that a e equal to c 1 sin alpha 1. Similarly, if we now look at the triangle a e b that means, a e that is c a 1 equal to we can write that uh, w 1 by w 1 sin beta 1 that we can write. So, these are very important to calculate the parameters that we will be using. So, now what is important you know that c 1 sin alpha 1 minus u. So, if we consider c 1 cos alpha c 1 sin alpha 1 minus u that means, we can write that this c a 1 equal to. So, we can write now that w 1 cos beta 1 this is w 1 cos w 1 sin beta 1 right. Now, we also can write another important relation that from triangle a b c c 1 cos alpha 1 minus v b that is from triangle a b c we can write c 1 
cos alpha 1 if we go to the uh, so c so this is you know uh, ec triangle abc that is c1 cos alpha 1 minus vv triangle abc and triangle aeb what we can write c1 cos alpha 1 minus vv equal to equal to this that is ev that is equal to w1 cos beta 1 right so c1 this this equal to ec equal to c1 cos alpha 1 minus u or vv equal to eb so i can write u because we have used u. So, this is not v b rather it is u, we have used u to denote the blade velocity u. So, that we can write this indicates from the velocity triangles that E c minus B c. So, this is E c minus B c equal to E b and also we can write also we can write that C 1 uh, W 1 sin beta 1 W 1 sin beta 1 equal to C 1 sin alpha 1. So, C 1 sin alpha 1 that is already we have written equal to C 1 equal to W 1 sin beta 1. So, from these two relations we can write tan beta 1 equal to c 1 sin alpha 1 divided by c 1 cos alpha 1 minus u. So, this expression we will be using today to calculate beta many times. So, now let us go back to the problem statement already we have drawn the velocity triangles for the blades. Second thing calculate the tangential axial and resultant thrust. So, as I said you if you look, if you would like to calculate tangential thrust i am using f t that equal to as i said tangential thrust is m dot s into delta c theta so this is mass flow rate of steam right and delta c theta if we go back to the previous slide I have already written. So, this is the expression of the delta c theta of delta c theta to be precise w theta 1 plus w theta 2 right. So, this is w theta 1 plus w theta 2. Now, if we go to the so this is w theta 1 plus w theta 2 w theta 1 is equal to w 1 cos beta 1 equal to w 1 cos beta 1 plus w 2 cos beta 2 w 2 cos beta 2 right that we can see from the velocity triangles. Now, if we again read the problem statement. So, basically we know the blade velocity coefficient k b equal to w 2 by w 1 and that is given if we look at the problem statement again it is given the ratio of relative velocity of steam at the blade outlet to that at the inlet is 0 0.86. What does it mean that is w 2 by w 1 equal to 0 0.86 that is the blade velocity coefficient. So, you can understand if we can somehow calculate w 1 from the data given and using the blade velocity triangles, we will be able to calculate w 2. Now, what is given? It is also given that ratio of blade velocity to steam velocity is 0 0.44, right. So, it is given. So, if we go here, 
it is given that blade velocity to steam velocity right u by c 1 blade velocity to steam velocity. So, blade velocity u divided by c 1 that is 0 0.44 right. So, already we have calculated u and u equal to pi into 100 centimeter 2800 rpm divided by 60. So, that is the u right because mean diameter is given 100 centimeter. If we calculate we will be getting the mean velocity that is equal to 146.53 meter per second. I would suggest you to check the numerical value or numerical values to be precise for the problems that we will be solving today for the you know uh, uh, to ascertain that I have calculated, uh, I might have done some mistake while calculating these values, but you may check. So, this is the u u. So, from this relations, we will be getting c 1 equal to u divided by 0 0.44 and we will be getting w u uh, equal to, this will be equal to 0 0.44. So, there is a little mistake. So, this should be 157 meter per second. So, this is 157 meter per second. So, it should be 157 divided by 0 0.44 would be equal to 356.82 meter per second. So, this is C 1. So, this is U this is u and this is c 1. So, we could calculate the absolute velocity of steam at the exit of the nozzle that is at the inlet of the blade and also the blade velocity right. Now, what we can do? We can use what would be the you know beta 1 because that is very important. So, now if we calculate there are two ways we will be using this expression to calculate beta 1, because already we have calculated c 1, alpha 1 is equal to given and already we have calculated u. So, using this relation if we calculate beta 1, so basically if we write the uh, expression tan beta 1 equal to c 1 sin alpha 1 divided by c 1 cos alpha 1 minus v b right. So, if we calculate alpha 1 equal to 20 degree that is given right. If we calculate you will be getting the value of and again I am writing v b I should write this is u because I have used here u is the blade velocity and u equal to we have already calculated 157 meter per second. And beta 1 if we calculate this is 0 0.6731 therefore, beta 1 equal to tan inverse 0 0.6731 and you will be getting 33.95 degree. So, you can check again the numerical value I am telling, but the procedure is correct. So, this is the beta 1. Now, calculating beta 1 and as I told you that beta 2 is given, if we go back to the problem statement, it is given that the blade outlet angle is 3 degree less than the blade inlet angle. So, that means, that means from the problem statement, beta 2 equal to beta 1 minus 3 degree. So, it should be 30.95 degree right. So, basically if we now if we would like to calculate delta c theta that is w theta 1 plus w theta 2 right that already we have mentioned here. 
that is w 1 cos beta 1 plus w 2 cos beta 2. So, try to understand that w 1 cos beta 1 plus w 2 cos beta 1 minus 3 degree right. What about w 1? w 1 if we now look at this expression, this expression that w 1 equal to c sin alpha 1 divided by sin beta 1, because we know alpha 1, we know c 1, we know beta 1. So, we can calculate w 1. So, we can write that is c 1, c 1 sin alpha 1 by sin beta 1 into cos beta 1 plus w 2 equal to k b into w 1 cos beta 1 minus 3 degree. So, what I am why I am writing it? So, this is beta 1. See in this expression everything is known, c 1 is known, beta 1 is known, beta 2 is also known, k b is known, then we can calculate what would be delta c theta. And if we can calculate delta c theta, then tangential thrust f t will be equal to m dot s into delta c theta that you can calculate. I am not calculating because this m dot s is given that is equal to gi that given 10 kg per second. So, this is 10 kg per second. Similarly, we can calculate axial thrust f a that equal to m dot s into delta c a right. So, now how can we calculate delta c a? Delta c a equal to, so delta c a if we look at the geometry delta c a equal to c a 1 minus c a 2. See what is c a 1 because already we know beta 1 and already we know w 1. So, that is c a 1 by w 1 equal to sin beta 1 and beta 2 already you have calculated we know w 2 from the blade velocity coefficient a blade friction coefficient and then we can easily calculate from from you know from these velocity triangles. So, we can write this that w 2 sin beta 2 this is w 1 sin beta 1 minus w 2 sin beta 2 equal to therefore, delta C a equal to uh, w 1 sin beta 1 minus k b into w 1 sin beta 2. So, again you can calculate easily what would be delta C a because w 1 is known, beta 1 is known, k b is known and beta 2 is known. So, this is 33.95 degree, this is 30.95 degree, k b is given 0 0.86 and this w 1 already you have calculated that is c 1 sin beta 1 by c 1 c 1 cos beta 1 by c 1 w 1 w 1 equal to c 1 sin alpha 1 by sin beta 1. So, this is alpha 1. So, this should be alpha 1 not beta 1 this should be alpha 1. Okay. So, sin alpha 1 by sin beta 1. So, you can calculate what would be axial thrust knowing or calculating these two uh, quantities we can calculate resultant thrust. F r equal to equal to under root f t square plus f a square. 
So, that would be resultant thrust. Nice. So, if we now move to the the another uh, you know part of this problem that is power developed by the blades. So, let me tell you power developed by the blades. Now, I am coming to the power blades that is P. So, let me tell you once again you can easily calculate delta C and delta C theta because all quantities are known right. Uh, because this C 1 is 356.82 and alpha 120 and beta 133.95. So, you can easily calculate W 1. So, now what would be power developed that is tangential thrust into velocity of course, blade velocity right. We can write we can divide by this we can divide this quantity by 1000 to write the quantity in kilowatt unit. So, tangential thrust is m dot delta c theta into u divided by 1000 the unit should be kilowatt. So, I try to understand had we calculated tangential thrust correctly we have already calculated blade velocity we can easily calculate it we can easily calculate what would be the power developed by the blades. And finally, blading efficiency see let me tell you one thing so, this is the power we are getting now power developed by the blades at the cost of sub input energy. So, this much amount of power developed by the blades at the cost of the input energy that is supplied to the blade. So, we can write it that this efficiency is defined by the ratio of you know rate of energy input to the blade and rate of work done that is power on the blade. So, rate of work done on the blade that is power developed by the blade to the rate of energy input to the blade. If we now try to simplify this quantity that means, you can understand that this should be m dot s delta c theta into u divided by half m dot s into c 1 square. So, basically kinetic energy of the jet which is you know available at the inlet of the blade and this is at the cost of this energy this much amount of power is developed. So, that means, we can write one step further and we can write one step further here and that is 2 delta c theta u divided by c 1 square. Now, cannot you calculate this quantity because already we have calculated delta c theta and we know blade velocity and we have already calculated c 1 that is absolute velocity of steam leaving the nozzle. So, we are all we can calculate the blading efficiency. So, with this next move to the another problem, this is the problem statement 2. It is given let me read out the problem statement again first and then we shall uh, start solving the problem. In a single st stage impulse turbine, it should be a single stage there is a mistake in the problem statement itself. It should be in a single stage impulse turbine. The mean diameter of the wheel is 100 centimeter, speed is 
speed of rotation is 2800 rpm, the velocity of steam at the exit of the nozzle is 280 meter per second. So, C 1 is given here. So, let me let us first again solve the problem. I mean before solving the problem, let us first write the data given. So, it is given d m equal to 100 centimeter alpha 1 equal to 25 degree. Try to recall the velocity triangles that we have drawn in the context of the you know previous problem. Now, d m equal to 100 centimeter alpha 1 equal to 25 degree and velocity of steam C 1 that is 280 meter per second. Right? The turbine blades are symmetrical and due to friction in the blade, the relative velocity of steam at the blade outlet is 0 0.87 times the relative velocity of steam at the inlet. That means, we need the problem statement is telling us to consider the blade velocity coefficient. So, basically it is given the blades are symmetrical, blades are symmetrical. What does it mean? Normally blades are symmetrical we have to that this particular you know you know uh, part I had mentioned that if it is not provided we have to assume that the blades are symmetrical for the impulse turbine beta 1 equal to beta 2. Blades are fabricated from the same dies. So, basically uh, the blades are geometrically similar. So, beta 1 equal to beta 2 and it is given that the relative velocity of steam at the blade outlet. So, relative velocity of the steam at the blade outlet is 0 0.87 times of the relative velocity at the inlet. That means, blade ve relative velocity at the blade exit is less than the blade relative velocity at the blade inlet. This is because of the friction. So, that means, it is given that blade friction or blade velocity coefficient k b equal to w 2 by w 1 equal to 0 0.87. So, all these data are given. We have to calculate the power developed when axial thrust on the blades is 150 Newton. So, what we can do? We can again draw the velocity triangles. this is C 1, this is W 1, this is alpha 1, this is C 2, this is W 2, this angle is beta 1, this angle is beta 2 and this is alpha 2. So, you know that this is W 2 and this component is delta C A, this is C A 2 and this is C A 1. Right? So, if we give name this is A, this is B, this is C and this point is D and this is the relative velocity at the exit W 2. Okay. Now, first we can calculate it, calculate u that is pi d m n by 60 and if we calculate this is pi into 100 into 2800 divided by 100 into 60 because this is 60 and you will be getting 146 point 
0.53 meter per second. So, this is the velocity blade velocity or so this is blade velocity. Okay. Now, let me tell you as I had mentioned we can use the relation tan beta 1 equal to C you know C 1 sin alpha 1 divided by C 1 cos alpha 1 minus u. Right? So, C 1 that is uh, you know given C 1 is given to 80 meter per second. So, already C 1 given. So, if we now calculate, so that is 280 into sin 25 divided by 280 cos 25 minus 146 0.53 and if we calculate beta 1 equal to you will be getting 47.81 degree. I am telling once you oh, I am I am once again telling you that please check the numerical value, but the procedure is correct. So, this is the beta 1 once we have calculated beta 1 then quickly we can calculate calculate w 1 because w 1 equal to c 1 sin alpha 1 divided by c 1 sin alpha 1 divided by sin beta 1. Right? So, the first step should be to calculate beta 1, once we calculate beta 1 c 1 is known alpha 1 is known we can calculate w 1. So, that is 280 sin 25 divided by sin 47.81 and you will be getting the value that is 159.7 meter per second. So, this is W 1. So, see as I told you that we also can solve the problem graphically because if we can calc had if we, we have calculated u. So, if we use suitable scale we can represent that u and we know alpha. So, we can calculate C 1, but now we could calculate uh, C 1 is already given. So, we are can calculate C A 1 in its other quantities, but now we are trying to solve it analytically. So, W 1 is this, we have calculated W 1, then W 2 equal to 0 0.87 times W 1 that is given, right. So, W 2 should be 0 0.87 times into 159.7 and that is equal to 138.95 meter per second right question is we have to calculate if we go to the problem statement again calculate the power developed when axial thrust on the blades is 150 newton that means axial thrust fa that is m dot s into delta c a so this is the axial thrust So, this is equal to 150 Newton that equal to m dot s into C a 1 minus C a 2. Right? So, what is C a 1 minus C a 2? So, C a 1 equal to C 1. So, we can calculate what would be m dot s that is 150 divided by C a 1 minus C a 2. Now, now if we go back to the you know this geometry we can see C a 1 equal to C 1 sin alpha 1. So, C a 1 equal to C 1 sin alpha 1 and what about C a 2? C a 2 equal to W 2 C a 2 equal to W 2 sin beta 2. right it is given beta 1 equal to beta 2 right so what we can do c1 is already given alpha 1 is given we can calculate c1 what is what was not given directly is 
w 2, but we could calculate w 2 and beta 2 is equal to beta 1, right. So, basically we can calculate uh, beta 2 because beta 2 equal to beta 1. So, this is 150 divided by c 1 equal to c 1 sin 25 minus w 2 is equal to 138 that equal to 138 138.95 and C A 2 we could write C A 2 equal to sin beta 2. So, sin beta 1 equal to beta 2 that is 47.81 and if we calculate we will be getting 9.75 kg per second. So, you can check again. So, this is 9.75 kg per second. So, this is what we could calculate. Now, we have to calculate what would be the power developed, right? Because that is what the quantity of interest for this particular problem. So, now power developed, we can calculate easily power. developed by the blades equal to we know tangential thrust m dot s into delta c theta into u divided by 1000 if we do so that we can write the unit kilowatt. So, that is kilowatt provided this delta c theta and u that is meter per second and ms is equal to kg per second. So, what we can write it you know already in this expression already this is known that is equal to 9.75 meter per second. This quantity is also known u equal to 146.5 53 meter per second. So, we have to calculate delta c theta that is the tangential thrust. So, now we can calculate tangential thrust if we can calculate then we can do or tangential thrust equal to m dot s into delta c theta. That means, this change in solved velocity delta c theta that would be equal to let me tell you once again this delta c theta can be calculated you know if we go back to the previous problem and if we look at the you know this part that is c theta 1 plus c theta 2 or equal to w theta 1 plus w theta 2. So, this is up to you. Now, if we consider w theta 1 plus w theta 2 for this problem that is w theta 1 plus w theta 2 this w theta 1 equal to w 1 cos beta 1 and this is w 2 cos beta 2. Let us verify whether we had written it correctly or not. So, w theta 1 that means, if we right here. So, this is this is w theta 2 and this is w theta 1. So, w theta 1 equal to this angle is beta 1. So, w 1 cos beta 1 and this is equal to w 2 cos beta 2 right. So, it is correct. So, what we can do? w 1 is already known w 1 cos beta 1 and w 2 equal to 0 0.87 into w 1 into cos beta 1 because beta 2 equal to beta 1. So, you can write 
W 1 cos beta 1 into 1.87, right. So, see already you have calculated beta 1 and already you have calculated W 1. So, that way it is coming 159.7 into cos beta 1 equal to 47.81 into 1.87. And if we calculate it and if we plug in the value of delta c theta in the expression of power developed here. So, we can get power developed will be equal to you can check that it is coming 286, 286.56 kilowatt. So, you can check it whether it is correct or not. So, this is the problem at least you can understand while solving these problems we can you know understand or we can you know uh, recapitulate the theoretical part that we have learned. And finally, the last problem that I will solve today is from another you know type of turbine that is uh, the impulse reaction turbine. So, if you try to recall we, we had established the expression of the blading efficiency for both impulse and reaction turbine. Today we have solved two problems from the impulse turbine. This problem is from the impulse reaction turbine. So, what is the problem statement? Let us quickly read out the problem statement. An impulse reaction turbine having degree of reaction equals to 0 0.5. We know that this is sometimes called only reaction turbine only to distinguish this type of turbine from the impulse turbine or it is also known as impulse reaction turbine. And degree of reaction you know that that is the enthalpy drop in the moving blades to the total enthalpy drop that we have discussed. And the turbine runs at 2800 rpm, the inlet blade angle of the moving blade and the exit angle of the fixed blade are 30 degree and 20 degree respectively. Mean diameter of the wheel is 0 0.6 meter and the steam condition is 1.5 bar with equality 0.935 percent. Of course, that is the steam quality at the inlet of the blade. Calculate the required height of the blade to pass 60 kg per second of steam and the power developed by the stage. So, let us quickly solve this problem. So, this is impulse reaction turbine, right. So, impulse reaction turbine as I said you that this type of turbine is also known as reaction turbine because sometimes this type of turbine you know uh, if we need to distinguish them or uh, just to differentiate them from the impulse turbine we call it reaction turbine otherwise the impulse reaction is also uh, a common name of this type of turbine. And degree of reaction r equal to half and we know that degree of reaction is basically enthalpy drop in the moving blades to the total enthalpy drop. The difference is the fundamental difference is in a reaction turbine when steam passes through the blades or moving blades pressure drops. And at the cost of the pressure drop you know that the relative velocity is increased little. And steam turbine rotates because of both impulsive effect that is change in momentum due to the you know uh, change of direction of the jet as well as the reaction force that reaction force you know is impressed on the blades in the opposite direction. So, for r equal to half that is this degree of reaction equal to enthalpy drop delta h moving blades divided by total enthalpy drop that is delta h m v plus delta h fixed blades. Now, if r equal to half then you can understand that means delta h 
moving blades equal to delta H fixed blades. So, this is for R equal to half and for such a turbine you know basically let me tell you as I told you that typically blades are symmetrical because fabricating blade or blades of a turbine is not so easy. So, basically blades are fabricated from same dies and beta 1 equal to beta 2 for the geometrical similarity. So, basically blades are similar geometrically similar. Right. Otherwise, we have to use you know different dies for different blades. So, that would be again much more expensive. So, beta 1 equal to beta 2 and for r equal to half for r equal to half you know c 1 equal to w 2 that is absolute velocity of steam from the fixed blade or nozzle is equal to relative velocity of steam from the exit of the moving blades. And if we know that we are using a common V B to superpose the velocity triangles. So, that means, if we consider velocity triangles both at inlet and outlet of the blades, then we can see these two triangles are having a common side that is V B beta 1 equal to beta 2, this c 1 equal to w 2 right. So, the blades are you know the triangles are symmetrical. So, basically you know if we try to draw the velocity triangles, triangles will be symmetrical. Let us first draw the velocity triangles and then we will discuss. So, if we draw the velocity triangles here. So, this angle is alpha 1, this is beta 2, this is beta 1, this is c 1, this is w 1, this is w 2, this is c 2 and this is alpha 2. Okay. So, if this is triangle A, this is B, C and D. So, for R equal to half, you know, uh, triangles are symmetrical. Okay. So, that means, triangle A B C equal to triangle B C D. Now, what we can write? We can write for R equal to half that is C 1 equal to W 2 right, alpha 1 equal to beta 2 beta 1 equal to alpha 2 and c 2 equal to w 1. So, try to understand we have a common base common side B c blades are symmetrical. So, triangles are symmetrical and from you know if we consider these two triangles we can write c 1 equal to w 2 alpha 1 equal to beta 2 and alpha 2 equal to beta 1 and c 2 equal to w 1. Now, question is what what are the data given in this problem statement? It is given that we can easily calculate u. So, u equal to pi d m m 
10 by 60 and it is given 0 0.6 meter into 2800 divided by 60 and that equal to 87.92 meter per second. So, that is the mean velocity and that is the mean velocity. So, this is u blade beam velocity and it is given you know that the inlet blade angle of the moving blade and exit angle of the fixed blade. So, basically it is given inlet blade angle of the moving blade. So, beta 1 equal to 30 equal to alpha 2 and it is given exit blade angle and exit angle of the fixed blade that is nozzle. So, basically it is given beta 2 equal to alpha 1 equal to 20 degree. So, these are the data given. So, we need to calculate the you know power developed and it is given. So, try to understand we have to calculate the power developed. Let me write here. So, power developed by the blade is equal to P that is equal to m dot delta c theta u divided by 1000 if you would like to write the unit in kilowatt. What about delta c theta? This delta c theta equal to c theta 1 plus c theta 2. If we look at the velocity triangles, see c theta 1. So, this is this is c theta 1 and this is c theta 2. So, c theta 1 equal to you know c 1 uh, cos alpha 1 plus c 2. So, we can write that this equal to c 1 cos alpha 1 plus c 2 cos alpha 2. So, this angle is alpha 2 right. So, uh, if we write or we can write that equal to w 1. Uh, so, basically you know that this is alpha 2 or this is as good as equal to w 1 cos beta 1 plus w 2 cos beta 2 that we have discussed in the context of the solution of the previous problem that is equal to w theta 1 plus w theta 2 right. Now, we can easily calculate what would be the value because let me tell you one thing what it is given because we know everything. So, what we know? We know alpha 1 equal to 20 degree. Right. We know alpha 2 equal to 30 degree. So, if we can calculate C 1 or C 2, then we can calculate easily delta C theta. How can we calculate C 1 and C 2? So, basically or w C 1 and W 1. So, we can easily calculate uh, if we look at the triangle A B C and if we apply law of sines or sine law, then we can easily calculate what would be C 1 because already we know U 1. So, applying sine law, so applying sine law, we can write C 1 divided by sine 180 minus beta 1 will be equal to w 1 divided by sin alpha 1 equal to u divided by sin a. So, 
u divided by sin a this angle equal to w 1 divided by sin alpha 1 equal to c 1 divided by sin 1 at t minus beta 1 that is clear c 1 divided by sin 1 at t minus beta 1. Now, from this what we can write we can easily calculate what would be c 1 that equal to because we can you know compare the first one with the last one that is u sin 1 what is beta 1 beta 1 equal to 30 degree right. So, sin 180 minus 30 divided by uh, sin a and angle a is angle a is 180 minus 150 plus 20 equal to 10 degree you can check. So, this is you will be getting so this is equal to so if I write it sin a so that means we can write this is sin 10 this is sin 10 and you will be getting the value 253.15 meter per second and similarly we get we can get w1 equal to u sin alpha 1 equal to 20 degree that is already given divided by sin 10 and that would be equal to 173.16 meter per second. I am telling you once again to check the numerical values. So, C 1 equal to and W 1 equal to we have calculated right. Now, we can calculate it we can calculate what would be this uh, uh, delta c theta next. So, delta c theta equal to c 1 sin alpha 1 that we have already written c sorry c 1 cos alpha 1 c 1 c 1 cos alpha 1 plus c 2 cos alpha 2. Okay. So, c 1 equal to c 1 cos alpha 1 plus c 2 would be equal to w 1 and alpha 2 would be equal to alpha 2 beta 1. Right. So, here you know c 1 already you have calculated in the previous slide that is 253.15 meter per second w 1 equal to c 2 equal to 173.16 meter per second alpha 1 equal to 20 degree beta 1 equal to 30 degree. So, for all this data we can calculate this delta c theta and it is coming as 387.84 meter per second. So, this is delta c theta. Now, we can calculate the power developed right provided. So, we have calculated delta c theta already we know you we can calculate power developed provided if we calculate m dot mass flow rate. How can we calculate mass flow rate? So, what is the problem statement given? See it is given m dot equal to 60 kg per second right. So, 60 kg per second then we can easily calculate the power developed P equal to. So, we can calculate the power developed P equal to we can calculate uh, what is mass flow rate. Three eighty seven. So we uh, 
m dot delta c theta u divided by 1000 kilowatt right. So, what is u 1000 and it is given. So, you can calculate 60 kg per second right 60 kg per second. So, you can write this is 60 kg per second delta c theta equal to 387.84 and u already we have calculated here u equal to 87.92 right 87.92. So, we can plug in the value 87.92 divided by 1000 kilowatt that you can check also. And last part is that we have to calculate if we need to really uh, have flow of steam 60 kg per second at this rate then what would be you know height of the blade. So, one important part is that if we go back to the previous slide you know it is given that you know uh, steam condition is 1.5 bar with quality 95 percent. So, from there we can calculate what is the specific volume of steam at this you know condition. So, I am writing here that spe you know specific volume of steam. So, specific specific volume of steam specific volume of steam at the inlet at blade inlet V equal to V f plus x V f g right. So, if we calculate V f corresponding to that pressure 1.5 bar that is 1.5 bar into 0 0.1 mega Pascal you can you know we have discussed about this that we need to take data from the steam table and it would be I am writing 0 0.001053 plus 0 0.95 it is given uh, into 1.1594. So, this is the specific volume of the steam. Now, let me discuss here that that steam will flow. So, I can write here at the last slide that you know. So, basically if we write here that flow rate of steam. So, this m dot into specific volume equal to flow velocity into flow area. M dot into specific volume that is the flow rate. So, we have already calculated M dot that is given 60 into the specific volume that just now we have calculated using the you know uh, given condition of the steam that is V f plus x V f you know this V equal to V f plus x V f g and if we calculate it you will be getting the value 1.1024 meter cube per kg. Okay. So, this is 1.1024 equal to flow velocity that is C A 1 into flow area that is pi into d into blade height h. So, now try to understand in this expression we know d we have to calculate this h that is the blade that is the blade height h provided if we know C A 1. What is C A 1? C A 1 that is the flow velocity that equal to C 1 sin alpha 1. 
if we go to the previous slide. So, c this is C A 1 that equal to C 1 sin alpha 1. So, I am writing here that is C 1 sin alpha 1. We can easily calculate because we have already calculated C 1, we have already calculated we, the alpha 1 is given. So, if we plug in the value of C A 1 over here d this would be d m to be precise then we can calculate easily what would be h. So, you can check what would be the numerical value of h that would be of the order of centimeter. So, to summarize today we have solved a few numerical problems from steam turbine we have covered both impulse as well as impulse reaction turbine essentially to illustrate the concept that we have learned, learned from the theoretical uh, discussion. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you. Thank you.